Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. Uh, this is Madhuri and today I'm going to take you through a very different kind of a journey uh, in a country which has a very rich history of TVET. And uh, we have an expert who's going to share very important insights, uh, mostly pertaining to teacher education uh, and also teacher empowerment uh, in the TVET or vocational education and training space. And I'm so glad that today we are talking to Natalia Dolgova, uh, uh, who's at present in Serbia, uh, but then she's actually going to share her expertise in TVET from her experience in Russia. And uh, this talk is very important for us, Natalia, because uh, this is the first time we are featuring a story from uh, the Russian ecosystem of TVET. So welcome to this talk. Oh, thank you very much. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me for this crucial conversation. And I think we will do this as best as we can. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, as we have been connected for some time and we have exchanged few points and notes, I would like to take this forward by asking you a few important uh, points that you know we thought we should be learning from you. Uh, first and uh, most important, I would say, is uh, the importance of uh, training of trainers in the TVET ecosystem. Uh, you know, can you tell us how important it is from your experience? You have, I think, 13 plus years of experience uh, working in the Russian ecosystem. So the importance of it and also perhaps how we can leverage technology to make a difference in the life of a vocational teacher or a vocational expert or any industry expert who is imparting vocational training? Oh, that's a very nice question because everyone in the world is just having these questions and uh, I need to go deeper in it because it's not as simple as it as it be. In my view, the Odyssey into vocational calling within the realms of uh, technical vocational education and training is inaugurated by the educators. It is from their wellspring of knowledge that the future grades draw the competencies essential for their professional life. But in our current epoch, we grapple with multifaceted challenges besetting teachers in the uh, vocational education and training system. The stain of meager remuneration, the gap in insufficient qualifications, the burden of overwhelming workloads, among others. And furthermore, we confront a quandary of varying the pedagogical preparations for the secondary professional education system, neglects to impact the pragmatic knowledge essential for the future professional endeavors. Take, for instance, the exploration of theoretical models in engineering science, which fails to illuminate the operation of cutting-edge technological equipment in production settings. Mm -hmm. This void of impractical knowledge renders educators incapable of guiding students through the resolution of real-world production dilemmas. I think uh, that... Uh, it is crucial to understand how it works because in uh, um, general, uh, the archetypical journey of a college educator is marked by the acquisition of a dual diploma, a testament to their pedagogical and specialist expertise, yet often devoid of industry experience. Mm -hmm. This dis disparency fostered a charism of knowledge that within a mere two, three years escalates to a profound disconnections from the reality of production. I think this is the most important thing to uh, make education uh, re relevant for the demand of uh, the labor and uh, demand of the industry. Right. What do you think? Yes, that's true. Uh... I think uh, this is the most important point when we talk about vocational or skill-based education. Uh, first and most uh, critical is how well aligned it is with the industry requirements. Because uh, the objective here is to prepare the young people, the youth, 
to meet the requirements of a particular job role and also to meet uh, these requirements uh, you know in the modern most modern type of uh, requirements that is like using technology and other things which means the curriculum has to be updated uh, the training has to happen you know in a most efficient way so my next question to you would be uh, in your experience uh, you know have you come across uh, what kind of models have worked when we had to integrate the curriculum with the industry uh, so do you have any idea maybe you can give us an example how we can align uh, the teacher education part with uh, the industry requirements that's uh, a very complicated question i can say uh, because when we uh, meet uh, with industry sometimes it's it give us um, very strange uh, knowledge of how they want us to teach students hmm. uh, for example um, i faced the situation in 2018 we ran a training program for vocational school directors in siberia Okay. including a meetup with local businesses to tailor in educational programs to industry needs. Mm -hmm. On paper, the meeting was a success, but re in reality, it was a disaster. Okay. Companies, they didn't know what they need. And uh, sometimes they want uh, professionals now, and they don't give us any time to prepare them. As a result, um, the uh, directors uh, just take notes and come to their colleges, try to, to adapt, but ended up preparing students for yesterday's needs, not tomorrow's. Okay. That's why it is crucial to build a well-structured system of vocational training in partnership with businesses on yeah. the stands uh, that's... that's um, can help us not to um, not to just uh, frame us with one meeting like this. Yeah, that's true. So uh, you you mean that we have to have more engagement with them, uh, something like an ongoing interaction uh, with the people who are heading these businesses, these companies. Uh, representing various industry sectors, right? Like you just mentioned, it is like not the education of yesterday, but something that we need tomorrow or even today. So I think that sums it up uh, very well. So in other words, what uh, we uh, talk about here in India is also something similar. I think uh, most of our programs are striving to towards making it relevant for the industry. Uh, like, for example, uh, when you look at technology, the rate, the pace at which the technology is changing, uh, like you say, take up any sector, logistics, automotive, uh, you know, construction, any sector, uh, it is difficult for the curriculum to match with the speed of technology change. So somewhere you have to, uh, you know, make sure that the teachers or the trainers get exposed to the new technologies, get exposed to new knowledge, and then, uh, you know, interact with the learners and uh, help them learn, facilitate those sessions. So is there any other example you would want to give us in terms of uh, uh, providing industry integrated, uh, you know, uh, training for the trainers? Any good example that comes to your mind? Yes, I have two examples. Uh, I, I I want I would like to start with uh, one uh, that it's uh, I can say not uh, so good uh, because it's uh, better to start from the, <laughs> the worst and then come to the best. <laughs> okay. And this uh, <clears throat> situation uh, we. Uh, Make an uh, in Russia we have a head, and yeah, because nowadays we have another one system, but we had a world skills standard ecosystem, right? And um, we uh, had uh, some courses for students, some uh, industry related um, uh, 
platforms uh, to to start to make to understand the real needs of the industry and uh, some as uh, courses for uh, educators but uh, the issue war with uh, world skill standards and uh, all these world skills uh, ecosystem that training with equipment um, uh, that's theoretically up to date but practically this is uh, absolutely disconnected from uh, the everyday realities they are mm -hmm. supposed to enhance that's the problem uh, and sometimes uh, students who are really good in the skills uh, based on wor work skills <laughs> skills <laughs> ecosystem uh, so sorry for this <laughs> but uh, they uh, they graduated and they couldn't find any job because uh, their skills it's they are too over they are too overqualified yeah and uh, not uh, uh, there uh, sometimes industry uh, have no to um, offer them mm. they just okay you have a very good uh, qualification but sorry sorry there is no job for you yeah. That's a problem. But uh, to make it a little bit sweeter, I can uh, tell you about a shining example. Okay. Uh, this is a professionalität. Uh, in English, it's uh, like uh, to understand it, um, professionalism. Mm -hmm. I, I can say I, I can translate it like this. If this is a project in Russia uh, started back in 2022. Uh, this is innovative approach, uh, trains workers and uh, uh, engineers specifically for certain factories, hmm. shortening education to two and th or three years, depends on the program, hmm. with guaranteed jobs from the employers themselves. Hmm. I think this is a game changer. Okay. It's it's too uh, early to judge the project's um, success because it's uh, we have no grade grades uh, now. But uh, this um, the uh, this project helps to foster an, an ecosystem okay. where companies, educators, and students collaborate closely, including special training for teachers mm -hmm. for each program. Uh, uh, teachers who will uh, work with students have their individual plan mm. uh, uh, that's crucial because uh, every college every technical vocational education and training um, organization they are different mm. they are really different and, and we need this individual approach nowadays Right. And th this project embodies my belief in the importance of involving a teacher's knowledge and experience to meet changing industry demands. Hmm. I can, I, I think that's, that's uh, important. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for telling us about this interesting project. Uh, were you also a part of the Kazan uh, World Skills competitions uh, when it happened? Uh you just yeah. uh, mentioned uh, you know few things so it just reminded me i think we had a huge participation from india as well during those competitions uh, yeah and uh, yeah that's one more area where you know trainers are needed experts are needed for preparing them for these competitions right yeah so um, now that you told us a bit about a couple of examples uh, there is one problem which is rather universal I would say that is to uh, make uh, vocational education or skill-based learning or skill-based education aspirational uh, so that, you know, people go to this by choice and not by force. So it has been quite a challenge. And I think it's not just in India. Um, my understanding, it says that it's, the, it's kind of a challenge in many countries, including advanced countries also. Uh, but uh, there is always, there are several countries, uh, you know, which have shown us the way like Germany and uh, other European countries where because of their dual model and other things, uh, they have established, you know, uh, internationally uh, very effective models. So what is your understanding about uh, how we can make it aspirational? Uh, you have anything to share from the experience uh, that you had in Russia?
some c couple years ago, I started to um, to go deeper in the history of vocational education and training, and I understand that uh, there were uh, some periods in um, Russian history when um, vocational education and training uh, <clears throat> were uh, um, were seen as a re refuge or for ignorance. Mm -hmm. There, is, uh, and um, when I am talking about this, I felt uh, feel so bad because uh, it is a crucial part of our life. But yeah. um, in the ninety nineties, when uh, the Russian Federation started and uh, USSR just uh, stopped, <laughs> um, the the uh, especially vocational education and training there has just stopped the evolution. And for a lot of t time, it's um, degraded, I can say, that's, uh, de uh, and um, we lost a lot of uh, the previous experience. And mm -hmm. nowadays, we need to rebuild it make it uh make it great again i can say <laughs> and uh, this this is uh, the most difficult job ever mm. i can say that's really difficult because uh students uh, they don't believe sometimes uh, in vocational education training and they um sometimes industry or uh, they want it um be, uh, students from with uh, higher education and they want they make uh, they have an opportunity to pay them better and uh, it's sometimes it uh, influences uh, the um, situation yes. Yes. but but uh, in 2020 after the pandemic uh, the situation really changed mm. uh, and um, that is why because the government uh, have uh, a special program for mm -hmm. uh, for making uh, for promotion um, of vocational education and training, uh, such as okay, um, let it be world skills, but it really plays a crucial role role in uh, popularization, in uh, making uh, some uh, beliefs in uh, vocational education and training and but now is they have this program like professionalite professionalism like we can say it in english yeah. uh, and it uh, it makes um, professional education like uh, well uh, known uh, they uh, it gives an opportunity to touch the uh, professions to understand what is it about yeah. yeah, am I really have an opportunity to work with this profession, or I'm just having this profession, and this is my uh, one step to my future, just yeah. one step. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pivotal, and um, uh, here I can add uh, that we in Russia we the help of this project, uh, as I can say, uh, as I said earlier. Uh, this is a whole ecosystem. It yeah. is a whole ecosystem that helps not only to improve uh, vocational education and training, but also uh, to uh, to make it uh, more valuable. I can say uh, more prestige. Yeah, that uh, I think it's the problem of all countries. It's yes. not very prestige to to be at vacation, vacation train. But now, uh, the things change, and uh, it, it really helps us uh, to to make it better. Yeah, as you said very rightly, the important word in uh, you know in the Russian context is to rebuild the system. Uh, like you were saying, and also the element of prestige, I think, sums it all, uh, you know, and I'm sure with so many efforts happening from the government and other stakeholders, I'm sure this is going to change, but then the change could be uh, very slow and painful, but it might happen, right? <laughs> yeah, so we should look at the positive side of things. So it's nice talking to you, Natalia, you've shared so many points. Is there anything else you wish to add uh, before we close this conversation? Oh, I, I just want to add that uh, none of this effort will succeed without dedicated educators. Yeah. 
So we need to help them uh, to make their wages higher <laughs> <laughs> yes. and to, to make vocational education training prestige. Yes. Because it uh, without it, we could not uh, live in the good uh, communities. We could not uh, have all such good uh, ecosystem and um, other facilities. <laughs> so we need to to make some effort to for educators to be, to be uh, for the best of vocational education and training. Thank you. Thank you so much for re-emphasizing on the uh, TVET educators or the trainers, as we call them in India mostly. I think uh, their uh, salaries, their pay and their remuneration matters a lot. Thanks for re-emphasizing that. And also the word prestige, I'm going to carry back uh, you know, as a very important takeaway learning from you. And I think um, all of us in different countries, even though we are, uh, you know, far, far away, but I think our goal is the same to bring that value and prestige, uh, add that social, uh, you know, element to this so that things become aspirational. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And I think we learned quite a lot about uh, uh, the importance of training the teacher education uh, and teacher educators. And um, uh, we will have uh, you again, maybe sometime probably in another occasion, we'll invite you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and this wonderful conversation and interview. Thank you.